ears are often exposed to loud sounds for considerable lengths of time. The consequences of such exposure on performers' health are many and varied. Numerous general health issues can arise as a result of too much time spent in loud environments, including cardiac disease, hypertension, ulcers and other stress-related conditions. Regular check-ins with a GP can help monitor, prevent and treat these issues. Loud noise can also, of course, cause direct damage to performers' hearing. To understand how this damage unfolds, it is helpful first to understand how we hear. Sound waves in the air travel into the ear and cause the eardrum to vibrate. These vibrations are transmitted by three small bones, the ossicles, the smallest bones in the body, to the inner ear or cochlea. This shell-shaped organ is full of tiny hairs which, when vibrated, send electrical signals to the brain that are then interpreted as sound, speech and music. The most dramatic form of damage is caused by extremely loud, sudden, explosive noise, such as gunfire, causing immediate pain and potentially damaging the eardrum. However, the incidence of this type of injury is relatively rare in the performing arts. Much more common is noise-induced hearing loss, which often causes no pain and is imperceptible in the early stages, meaning considerable and irreversible damage can be done before the performer is aware that it is occurring. Exposure to even moderate amounts of sound will, over time, wear out the hair cells in the cochlea. The louder and longer the sound exposure, the more quickly this will happen. The frequency or pitch of the noise also matters. Different hairs are tuned to detect different pitch ranges, so prolonged exposure at a particular frequency will cause the most damage to the part of the ear it causes to vibrate. At first, this damage may not be noticeable. Traditional hearing tests, where patients respond to recorded sounds, may not show any loss of hearing. However, the process of hidden hearing loss will have begun. As damage worsens over time, it starts to affect perception. Traditional hearing tests might still not indicate loss of hearing, but more complex forms of hearing can be affected. Individuals can begin having difficulties with understanding speech in noisy settings. They can suffer from hyperacusis or sensitivity to particular sounds. They might be affected by diplocusis, where a particular tone can sound out of tune between the two ears. Or they might experience tinnitus, a persistent ringing, buzzing, humming, clicking or hissing noise in one or both ears. While these conditions are often temporary if treated, they can cause serious disruption for any performer. With further damage to the cochlea, performers may start to notice reduced ability to hear particular tones. It is at this stage that a traditional hearing test can be used to measure and track precisely which frequencies are affected and to what degree. However, by this point, the damage is often irreversible and the only course of action are forms of noise reduction and hearing protection to prevent further hearing loss. Due to the often hidden nature of hearing loss, it is important to take action to control exposure to loud sounds and to prevent hearing loss. This can be achieved by working with an audiologist who can conduct different forms of hearing tests, such as autoacoustic emissions testing, which may help detect damage earlier than a traditional hearing test. While an audiologist should be consulted at the first sign of damage, taking preventative action through noise monitoring and regular hearing tests is the best thing a performer or performing arts organisation can do to safeguard hearing.